Good morning. Welcome. Glad to see all of you this morning. See a bunch of smiling faces out there. Everybody looks alive and ready for this morning's service. That's exciting. Uh, I just have a few announcements I want to share with you this morning. First of all, uh, ladies of the church, how many of you have a lot of purses in your closet that you don't use anymore? Ooh, just one. I don't believe you. I believe that all of you have purses in your closet you don't use anymore. I know that I do. Right now, uh, the Archbold uh, Fish Food Pantry is collecting purses. Uh, they want to fill the purses with nail clippers, a nail file, hand sanitizer, tissue, band-aids, and other small items, and then they're going to distribute them uh, to women who come to the pantry during the months of August and September. So uh, be a part of that and bring your purses in. Um, there will be a blue tub in the narthex um, from now through July 30th. So go and clean out those closets, ladies. Um, and gentlemen, any of you guys have purses? <laughs> uh, also, coming up this Wednesday is our churchwide pool party uh, at the uh, Archbold Pool. Um, we're going to begin our evening at 7 p.m. Uh, at the pavilion right near the pool. Um, there's going to be activities related to baptism. And then at 8 o'clock, we'll be headed over to the pool, and everyone is welcome for that hour of swimming and poolside games, and I also hear prizes. Who doesn't love a good prize? So I hope all of you plan to attend that. And now let us stand and greet each other this morning.
please join me in the call to worship. Holy Lord, maker of us all, you call us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Open us to the opportunities for ministry that lie before us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. may be seated. Good morning. morning. I bring you great tidings from Nicaragua. I have spoken several times with Pastor Jim and on our Skype conversation last night I even got photobombed a couple of times by people. They're having a wonderful time. But missions, We were supposed to have two mission trips this year, and we did successfully get this one underway, and I'm really excited about that. Um, As one of the things that I am doing in the new program year, so to speak, is I am going to take on being chair of your missions team. So I will be excited to present different things and opportunities for us in the future to consider. That's just one of the things that we do here in the church. I want to turn your attention also to the worship bulletin this morning for those listed on the back who need additional prayers this week. I know the Sparks family has had um, an accident and there's several members who need, need extra prayers this week, as well as Jody's mother moving forward with probably the second phase in her treatment as well. Let us take a moment and turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you this day with hearts full of emotions. We seek your presence to guide us on the right path to express those emotions and to do your work effectively. As a small part, we lift up those who cannot be with us in our time of worship today and ask that you be with each of them, keeping them safe. We lift up those who are sick, and who are struggling so that your hand can guide their path to wholeness once again. On a larger part, Lord, we seek guidance on where our place is, as a congregation, as an individual, to do your work. Help us to see where we can be of service to you in our community, in our nation, and around the world, to help the sick, the lame, the brokenhearted, and lead them to you for redemption and a faith-filled life. We seek to be more like Jesus and recognize that it is through the words he taught us that we can find peace. May those words be beautiful as you hear them now as we say them together in remembrance of your Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone. In the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee. Invite the children to come forward. Good morning, everyone. Morning. How are we doing this morning? Good. Mm -hmm. a, little, a, little, a little tired, maybe still? Yeah. You have a big, still recovering from your 4th of July celebrations? Maybe? Yeah? No? All right. I'm going to ask you guys some questions this morning, and it has to do with the scripture that I'm going to read later on today. And I'm going to invite the congregation to join in with me. So I want you to raise your hand if you've ever heard the saying, 
don't talk the talk if you don't walk the walk, or some variation of that. All right, ah, all right. Anyone, anyone up here? Anyone? No? Good? Okay. Now, what do you think that that saying means? What does it mean? You don't know? No? <laughs> it's kind of, what I'm going to say is it kind of means you got to practice what you preach. If you're going to talk about doing something, you got to do it. And so that's what our scripture is about today. Yeah? All right. Great. And so a way that we can do that is we want to be good Christians. Jesus wants us to be disciples, and he wants us to help others follow him. And so we want to practice what we preach by doing that. So what are a couple ways that we can practice what we preach? How can we be disciples and be good Christians? What, would, what, would, what are some ideas? What are things that you can do? Anyone have any ideas? You're here right now. What is that, what is that called? What are you doing? Going to church? That could be one. How about singing like Susie just did? That's a good way to be a disciple and singing with other people. Maybe going out to people who are shut in, especially at Christmas time, singing Christmas carols and things like that. How about reading the Bible? That could be one. Memorizing verses and scripture. Sharing those things with other people. Any, any other thoughts? Anything else that you'd like to do to praise Jesus? All right, well, slim pickings this morning. <laughs> so those are a couple different ways that we can help to basically talk the talk and walk the walk. Sharing our faith with others through just those different simple ways. It could be you're out on the playground, someone hurts themselves, you might say, you know what, let's, let's pray about your boo-boo. Or you know someone who's sick, you can invite them to church, maybe Bible school, maybe coming to a children's program. Those are all ways that we can walk the walk. So think about that as you guys continue to enjoy your summer and also as you head back to school, and that way you can share the good news with others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please help us to walk the walk in our faith journey. Encourage us to invite others to join us on that walk to help spread the good news of your word. In your name we pray, amen.
Our scripture this morning comes from James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith apart from works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was brought to completion by the works. Thus the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another road? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Let my teachings fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. Heavenly Father, may the words shared this day be ones of love and encouragement to those who hear, and be inspiring to invoke participation in your kingdom to do good works. Amen. When Pastor Jim was starting to prepare for the mission trips this summer, he asked me if I would be willing to speak on one of the Sundays. I answered affirmatively without really thinking about it. <clears throat> then he started speaking about storms, and from storms he went to preaching about Samaria, asking us where our Samaria is located for us as individuals and for us as a congregation. He was on a roll working with us to see the needs that we have an opportunity to fill right here in our own backyards. Well, where is he at today? Now he and Hal are actually out there working with the people of Nicaragua on a mission trip. They are working to help build a chapel for the residents of Project Chacacente to bring hope to a community that is off the beaten path and searching for their place in life. Originally, we were going to try and do a live interview with him and Hal during our pastoral prayer time so that they could share what they have been experiencing. And I have to admit, I'm glad that I asked him not to do it. The connections for our Skype conversations have been challenging, partly because of the rain and humidity. But in reality, it really would have been a tough act to follow. <clears throat> So let's talk a little bit about rain. Some people hate it, some people love it. As for me, I love the rain. And this should come as no great big surprise with me having been raised in the great state of Oregon. I embrace being a pluviophile, a lover of rain. Pluviophiles know that great comfort come can come from rain. Energy is created at a whole new level for you to grasp. Everything looks fresh and clean, brand new. Peacefulness surrounds you, enabling you to be calm and focused. And after the rain, when the sun comes out, you see a bright, beautiful rainbow in the distance, which is a sign from God that all will be well. There is a scene in the movie Mary Poppins. Okay, who's seen Mary Poppins? Thought this was a good reference. Where Bert, the chimney sweep, is also an artist. 
he creates elaborate pictures on the sidewalk for others to enjoy in the park. A lot of hard work and effort was put forth in those sidewalk paintings. They created in the hope that someone would take notice and appreciate the work and the artistry. But as soon as it rained, the artwork was all washed away. To most people, the idea of using watercolors to create something beautiful in an outdoor area would be wasted effort and energy. Why bother go to all that work to have it washed away with the next rain? Polluviophiles know that there is healing that takes place during rainstorms. The body, mind, and soul can be washed clean and refreshed. It is a chance to let go and let God take over the burdens that we carry around. It is God's way of giving us a chance to be nurtured, to grow, and to bloom in our own way. With rain, the watercolors are dispersed into the world so that the energy can be moved and used in another way. It also allows the artist to let go, knowing that growth was experienced through their creation. Faith is like rain. Faith is meant to make something new and grow. Faith is a knowledge that God is there to help in dark times, to thank for the good times, and to share with others. Faith refreshes and makes all things new. Faith also allows us to create something special and let it go to move in directions and ways that only God can accomplish. One of my very favorite Christian artists is Jeremy Camp. I know Emily's giving me a look right now. <laughs> One of his original hits entitled Walk by Faith has continually helped me through times of change and times of strife while in ministry with Pastor Jim. The song itself talks about God's grace guiding you over the broken road of life. It is a song that I can certainly relate to on my own faith journey. My belief in God began while I was recovering in the hospital from my car accident when I was 15 years old. My best friend, Michelle, and her family had requested that their pastors visit me in the hospital during my recovery. Michelle's family was going on a cross-country trip for summer vacation, which they had been planning for a year. And Michelle was very upset that she'd be leaving me alone during my recuperation. I got to know both of the pastors well and appreciated their love and care during a difficult time. It was through my conversations with those two pastors that convinced me God really existed. My survival of the car accident was nothing short of miraculous. Through all the circumstances surrounding the accident, from the location, to the emergency personnel, to my actual injuries, divine intervention was evident and the only explanation for my survival. My belief in God became real thanks to the help and guidance of those two pastors. <clears throat> but my faith did not grow until much later. It wasn't until I was pregnant with Jared that I was baptized and welcomed into church membership to the First United Methodist Church in Medford. Took my membership vows seriously and started attending Sunday school. I volunteered for help on church projects and really put myself out there to be engaged with others. The more I did inside the church, the more I learned about outside the church. The more I witnessed about what it meant to be engaged in the community, the more I discovered that there were people who needed to be helped in some way. The more I got involved, the more my faith grew. Now I'm not saying that the ministry road has been easy. Challenges have popped up all along the way. But as I indicated earlier, I love the rain. I have embraced life because I don't want to know how much 
of life I would have missed if I would have waited to see the rainbow before thanking God for the rain. It has been a journey of faith through works, lots and lots of works to become faith-filled. Our scripture reading this morning from the book of James talks about how faith without works is dead. More specifically, it challenges how can faith be authentic without works. Beginning on verse 15, and I'll quote, If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Through this example, James is demonstrating what might be termed as empty religion, which combines self-indulgence, failure to control the tongue, and a refusal to care for widows and orphans. Faith is about, is brought to perfection, excuse me, and fulfillment by good deeds. Faith is the subject from beginning to end. Deeds do not replace faith, they complete it. Because ultimately, the only thing that counts is faith working through love. The point is certainly not that works are a substitute for a faithful attitude. It is, rather, that the works reveal the faith-filled attitude and make faith alive. And I'll say that again. Works make faith come alive. So what are works? Is it a task to finish? Is it to promote a good cause? Is it to understand and learn something new in order to share it? Is it to stand up for what is right? Is it to put yourself out to be inconvenienced a little bit? Is it to build new relationships in everything you do? Is it to participate in your church family as well as your immediate family? You bet. It's all of it. It is all of these things. Works involve going beyond your comfort zone. I think I'm reverting back a little bit to last week's message. Sorry about that. But it's good stuff. Works involve moving outside your comfort zone. Because let's face it, you are the only one in your comfort zone. How can you grow as a person if you stay within yourself? Being faithful is personal and individual, but it can be very lonely. Only you can decide to be faith-filled. Filled to the point where your faith is alive in everything you do. With your family, with your job, with your friends, and with your community. Works is about going beyond yourself to reach out to show others your faith so that others can become faith-filled through your inspiration. I've been on this ministry road full-time with Pastor Jim for about 15 years now. I have moved across the country and started a new life. I have moved within the state of Ohio to serve different churches with Pastor Jim so that his gifts and graces could be utilized as God has seen fit. All of this has put me way outside my comfort zone on many, many, many occasions. I have experienced the good and the bad of church life and have come out of the storms to see the rainbow shining brightly over my path. I have watched as beautiful things created by congregations were washed out by indifference and negativity. And I have to admit, some of these beautiful things have actually happened while Pastor Jim and I have been here in this congregation. Faith without works is dead. No price can be put on works 
in order to grow your faith. Active participation is the only way to grow a faith-filled life. My faith in God is strong, and I strive to always be faith-filled to share with those around me. There are times, however, when it is difficult. But then I pray for rain to cleanse me, to refresh me, to make me new. Because I know that after the rain, the rainbow will appear. It's a God-given promise. Amen. As the ushers come forward, you are reminded to fill out your response forms and place them in the offering plate. And prepare your hearts and minds this morning as we pray. Generous God, we praise you for life itself and the spiritual renewal that you so freely give. Thank you for sending Jesus, who demonstrates what it means to be gentle and humble in heart. Gather our congregation and opportunities to respond to people's needs with tangible assistance. Fill us with your spirit so that we are eager to help others, like Rebecca, who gave water to a stranger and did not expect a reward. May our offerings be acceptable in your sight. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen.
be thankful for the rain, welcome it to be renewed, cleansed, and refreshed. I look forward to the rainbows.